Welcome. Welcome to our second webinar for 2024. My name is Helen Pothitter, representing the Clinical Engineering Association of South Africa. And a special welcome to our KISA members, our council members, associates, and of course, our corporate members who are making these webinars possible. The topic for today is an introduction to electrical safety. Uh, today's webinar will be presented by SSEM and Tembu and Rigel Medical, represented by Donovan Loden. I will do a short introduction and then hand over to the presenter. Um, I would like to ask all the attendees to keep their microphones on mute and your cameras off, please, for the duration of the presentation. I will. Um, it will not be interaction. Uh, interactive, but you are welcome to post any comments or questions in the chat box provided, and we will look at that. Um, and after the presentation, we will allow for about five to 10 minutes to address questions where possible. Our presenter, Donovan Loder, is an applications engineer at Rigel Medical. His exceptional career journey demonstrates his passion for technology and commitment to advancing the biomedical industry. With a broad skill set, extensive experience and a drive for excellence, Donovan continues to make significant contributions to the field while embracing new challenges in his role at Rigel Medical. Welcome and over to you, Donovan. Hello, everybody. My name is um... Donovan Lodel, Loder, sorry, I'm an application engineer for Rigel Medical. And uh, this presentation today has been developed to educate biomedical and clinical professionals in medical electrical safety. Firstly, um, I'm going to provide a quick overview of uh, Rigel Medical and what we do. And then we'll go through some electrical safety testing methods. Uh, what uh, best practices are in healthcare organizations and uh, provide an overview of the electrical safety standards. And as I get towards the, the end, we're going to have a look at some of uh, the alternative testing techniques, um, which are somewhat unconventional. So let's get started. Right, so a little information about ourselves at Rigel Medical. Um, we're renowned globally as a designer and manufacturer of reliable, portable, and compact biomedical test equipment. Our products ensure that critical medical equipment is safe to use throughout the device's life cycle. As metrology specialists for over four decades now, uh, our innovative uh, testing solutions have been mitigating risks worldwide in healthcare environments. We currently have uh, 40 distribution partners covering about 110 countries in the world with seven authorized global service centers. And our head office and main manufacturing facility is located in Peterley in the Northeast of England. We also have a, a, an office in uh, the US and that's in Tampa, Florida. So let's start with the uh, introduction. So, when an individual comes into contact with any type of uh, faulty electrical equipment, there's always the potential for the risk of electrical shock. The cardiac functions, nervous and muscular systems are all sensitive to physiological effects of electrical current passing through the body, especially at the uh, worldwide commercial frequencies of 50 and 60 Hertz. So there's further risk from electrocution in healthcare environments due to direct constant patient contact with all types of uh, uh, medical electrical equipment. More than 99% of the human body uh, body's resistance is by the skin. So um, it's considered, considered an effective barrier unless you wet it. Applied parts can often be connected close to the heart bypassing the effective skin barrier. In addition to this cardiac muscles and sensitive uh, are sensitive to tiny uh, currents. Uh, patients often in poor health, anesthetized, and or unconscious states. Uh, so it may be expected that patients are not even aware of an electric shock occurring. During se serious uh, operative procedures or recovery in ICU, a patient is 
uh, often in a more vulnerable state and electrocution poses a huge risk to serious in injury. So macroshock occurs when current passes through the body via contact with the skin. The external dry skin has high resistance, which limits current flow through the, through the body. And this is why many medical procedures involve moistening uh, of, the, of the skin, which uh, lowers the skin's re resistance uh, significantly. Examples of this are um, ultrasound gel and surgical applicants. Furthermore, patients are often in constant physical contact with medical electrical equipment, such as um, electrical monitoring systems and electric, electrically powered uh, beds. Uh, the results from which uh, macroshock uh, can lead to a loss of voluntary muscle control, uh, even at currents as low as uh, 10 milliamps. And uh, any more will lead up to ventricular fibrillation, uh, a value of about 100 milliamps. Um, as you can see on the, um, on the diagram that I've got over there, it's just a basic uh, overview of the, of the DFX of the mac macroshock. So patients in medical environments are uniquely vulnerable to, to risk of microshock as well. And microshock occurs when invasive patient connections are placed across or in close proximity to your myocardial tissue. Nerves and blood components have relatively low resistance. Therefore, very small levels of electrical current can induce ventricular fibrillation. Now, this is because tissue impedance below the skin surface is low and current is focused at uh, an invasive location. Death by uh, microshock is known as microelectrocution, and uh, both catheters and pacemakers carry the risk. So intercardiac connections in close proximity to the heart would mean that low currents can induce cardiac arrest. As it, it's been repeatedly estimated that currents over about 20 microamps can lead to microelectrocution, which is roughly about 5,000 times less than 100 milliamps, uh, which I spoke about earlier. The average resistance of the human body can be uh, one to two kilo ohms. Um, there's no physiological difference between let go currents and commercial frequencies of 50 to 60 hertz. In other words, the impact to the human body is the same in this range. In fact, the frequency response between 5,000 and 1,000 hertz is relatively flat, uh, causing the same sort of uh, effect. As the current frequency increases, the body becomes less stimulated. In other words, higher frequencies of electricity current of electrical current have a diminishing effect on the body in comparison to the range between five and 1,000 hertz. The results from exposure are dependent on the amount of current delivered and vary from a slight uh, perception to severe burns and uh, ventricular fibrillation. So electrical safety testing in healthcare organizations is an important practice and should not be compromised as it guarantees the safeguarding of clinicians, visitors, and vulnerable patients. The primary safety process is to prevent any patient or operator being exposed to currents that are not part of the functional operation of the device. There are several specified mandatory safety barriers within the circuitry of um, equipment to guarantee that leakage currents are not hazardous. Uh, we have earth connections for class one equipment, which relies on protective earth to provide a low resistance earth path for all leakage currents to, to flow to ground. Any substantial fault currents would therefore flow down the easy secondary path rather than through the patient or the user. Furthermore, a surge in current down earth would be detected by any uh, RCDs or protective fuses, uh, which would also interrupt the voltage supply. For insulation, we have 
basic, uh, which provides a sufficient dielectric strength and supplementary or the additional second layer um, is uh, secondary protection and is found in class two equipment and is provided by means of a double layer of insulation uh, with no earth present. Electrical safety testing ensures the safeguarding of patients. So the objective is to test for breakdown or damage to confirm the medical equipment is electrically safe to use in health, healthcare environments. Uh, protection against the uh, macro shock and micro shock, uh, legal liability, protecting patients, staff, and uh, visitors. So done at various stages of the product's life cycle, we have um, an acceptance test. Uh, most uh, medical equipment is designed and developed in accordance with IEC 60601-1, uh, which sets strict rules to the design of medical equipment. We know that the primary safety process is to prevent any patient or operator being exposed to currents. So for PPMs and post-repair, safety tests and regular maintenance carried out uh, by end users in healthcare environments helps to detect any potential defects during this testing. So for earth bonding, protective earth provides a leakage current path in case of any fault currents. Uh, several types of uh, class one medical equipment uh, have multiple exposed conductive uh, connections, such as uh, patient beds and sterilization baths. It provides protective integrity from touchable conductive parts of the medical equipment to earth. Routing, routine testing of uh, earth bonding is crucial to ensure uh, an adequate connection between these two conductors uh, and the main plug. Over relatively short periods of time, connections or bonds can fail, leading to an increase in contact resistance, uh, particularly in high workload, uh, high stress medical environments. Um, visual checks provide some safeguarding, but poor contact and film resistance can be inconspicuous, making them quite challenging to notice. Earth bonding is uh, the primary form of protection for this uh, class one equipment. So fault currents might trip uh, the fuse or RCD or circuit breaker, and this provides that additional layer uh, to the to the user. So what are we uh, measuring over here? Um, the schematic on the right shows um, the resistance measurement between exposed con uh, connectors and uh, protective earth, and the lower values, uh, the lower the value of this uh, this uh, result uh, will determine uh, the um the best uh bonding so uh limits are always uh, stated in the standard for this and measuring currents are sometimes uh, not specified in safety standards but are typically between 200 milliamps and 25 amps depending on the uh, phase of the life cycle of the uh, medical device So for insulation, well, in healthcare organizations, earth bond tests and leakage tests are two of the, the primary tests involved. Insulation is also sometimes included, but often it's uh, not a mandatory test. For insulation testing, what we do is we um, short live and neutral, uh, and the equipment does not power up during this test. We generally um, have a set voltage of 500 volts uh, DC applied across the power supply to ensure um, uh, to, to the enclosure or to ground. Uh, why 500 volts? Um, it's a stress test. So uh, we want to stress the insulation and invoke um, a potential breakdown when we run this test. The uh, Rugal 288 and 62353 uh, offer a range of uh, different voltages for this. So um, uh, the reason you'd want a different voltage or a lower voltage than 500 volts is um, uh, perhaps you have um, a equipment that's uh, sensitive to uh, higher voltages. So um, uh, some, something like safety extra low voltage equipment, um, we would um, select the lower voltages. So in this case, um, when we run this test, a, a high mega ohm reading uh, should be measured. Um, and uh, that's what you expect for your result. Um, it's opposite to the earth bond where we expect a low result for the earth bond. 
um, limits vary with class and output. So um, what is leakage current? Uh, it's basically current that is not functional. Um, so as per IEC 60601-1 2006, uh, it's unavoidable and a result of stray capacitance and uh, resistive dielectrics. Current at uh, commercial frequencies of 50 and 60 hertz flow from live to earth. Um, it can be non-hazardous if within limits uh, or the limits of IEC 60601 um, and their design criteria. Um, it's easily overlooked and subject to incorrect testing. Um, all mains powered equipment is developed to uh, only ensure that safe levels of leakage current is uh, are achieved or uh, and not eliminated. So during development, high levels of uh, isolation from electrical potentials to accessible conductive parts are required. Earth and enclosure type leakage currents have limits that reflect the values associated with the um, macro shop. And medical e electrical equipment is designed to have even higher degrees of isolation due to the introduction of patient applied parts and the risks associ associated with microelectrocution. Patient and, patient and user operator safety is crucial under both uh, normal and single fault conditions. So st stray capacitance, and this is a bit of a, this picture demonstrates uh, what, uh, what we're looking at when we have stray capacitance. Uh, class one earth leakage travels down the earth path to ground within a medical device. Uh, in a standard TN system, current in the live wire carries the functional current and leakage current, whereas the neutral wire contains only the functional current. Uh, earth leakage uh, can be expressed as line one uh, uh, minus line two. So uh, um, we're taking um, the uh, current in the uh, the leakage current uh, in the um, first line, uh, live wire and the neutral wire, and we're making a comparison between those two uh, with the functional current, and um, that will give us the non-functional current. From one of the first slides, we talked about how AC currents flow in a capacitor. Uh, the animation shows how capacitive currents flow to the enclosure from the internal components. In safe to use equipment, there is always a small leakage current flowing to earth um, and it's caused by the stray capacitance of, uh, in, of the circuits. Uh, and it goes from the enclosure to earth. Uh, the current is typically only a few microamps and is completely non-hazardous. The earth connection is there to keep the user or patient uh, safe in an event of uh, fault, whereby substantial levels of current flow from the circuit to the enclosure or applied parts. So test conditions, the IC60601 standard does specify the configuration of the main for electrical safety tests as uh, TN or terra neutral. Um, which has uh, neutral at the same potential as ground. Uh, we have to have uh, 230 uh, volts live. Leakage current is typically measured from a high potential to ground, uh, not from live to neutral. And to ensure the, the highest possible leakage is measured. On an IT system, the highest potential from phase to earth is not achieved, so leakage currents are limited, limited to isolation levels of the supply system. Therefore, no valid leakage measurements are possible unless the safety analyzer is able to produce an internal ground at half the line voltage. And this is why other devices have an IT system uh, detection uh, notification. In IEC 62353, it's possible to test the equipment leakage using the alternative method, um, which does not rely on any incoming uh, mains configuration and is similar in nature to uh, doing an insulation test. 
A direct leakage current uh, test must be carried out on TN systems to attain the highest possible leakage. So secondary earth pass, it's a common problem, but uh, often unnoticed. Um, it occurs when medical equipment is connected to other equipment, such as data lines, monitors, endoscopy, or even water. It provides a second low resistance path. And we know that the current takes the path of the least resistance. Um, and in this image, you can see it represents an example of a secondary ground connection by a, a data cable on a PC. Most of the current is taking the path of least resistance uh, rather than through the, uh, the analyzer, which has the body model circuit in. Um, and this is, uh, the body model is typically about one kilo ohm, so it's representing the, the resistance of the human body. So the low resistance is um, going through the, uh, uh, the leakage is going through the low resistance path. As you can see, it's going through the, uh, through the monitor, then uh, to the PC and uh, out through the ground. Now, the alternative path, because uh, significantly less current is flowing through the safety analyzer. Potential, it's potentially dangerous equipment that could pass um, uh, the leakage test. So this is why the warning system is so important um, with the secondary earth. The example in the image compares the one kilo ohm resistance of the body model uh, to the secondary ground path um, of about one ohms, uh, which is uh, when I say one ohms, it's um, fairly conservative. Uh, value. Values much less can be expected by an alternative path, which could equate to uh, about a thousand times error or more. Um, our automatic safety analyzers do also have this warning, a secondary earth path is detected, so um, you will be aware that uh, there is this path and it is present before testing. If the secondary ground path can't be removed and you're using the IEC 62353 standard, the differential leakage method can be used, um, which can measure the total leakage even with the secondary ground path. And um, it does not uh, make use of the one kilo body of, uh, model. So for input protection classification, we have uh, all tests relating to electrical safety on, on our medical equipment uh, and devices can be categorized in two categories. Um, uh, medical equipment class uh, means of operator protection or MOOP, um, which is um, medical equipment class one, uh, earth equipment protected uh, is pro protections provided by insulation and protective earth connection, or um, class two, which is double insulated protection, uh, provided by double layer of insula insulation uh, with no earth present. So these are the um, icons that, or the signs that you will get to see. And these are typically found on the rear of the uh, instrument close to the power supply. Then for our output protection, uh, we have um, applied parts, means of patient protection or mop. Um, and we have uh, type B, body, which is uh, non-invasive and earth-referenced medical equipment that is not intended to deliver an electrical signal to or from a patient. Uh, it typically has no conductive uh, contact uh, with the patient. And an example of this could be something like a hospital bed. We have type BF or uh, non-invasive and patient circuit, circuit floating or body floating, uh, medical equipment with direct contact with the patient. And this, an example of this is uh, maybe an S SPO2 probe. And we have uh, type CF, um, which is invasive uh, patient circuit floating or uh, cardiac floating. It's equipment suitable for direct cardiac application. Um, this is uh, something like capac uh, catheters and ECG modules. Um, the image on the left represents um, uh, type B, BF, and CF. And the right images um, are for defib proof classification, um, signified by the paddle markings on the side. Now, in electrical safety testing, the defib proof 
classification is irrelevant. Um, only whether the we only look for whether the the um, product is type B, type BF, or CF. Then something to note is um, that normally APs have contact with the patient and can be insulated. A patient connection is an individual point where current can flow between the patient and the medical device. Uh, floating equates to total isolation from any other internal uh, circuitry within the medical device. So what standard? Um, we have different standards, uh, such as the type test standard, uh, IEC 60601, or uh, recurrent testing, which is uh, IEC 62353. And in these uh, tests, we follow the same sort of routine, visual uh, test or visual inspection. And we check the housing for defects, um, correct fuse rating, et cetera. In the... Um, uh, then we check the uh, the class of the instrument, so is it class one or class two, and um, then we check the connections. Uh, is there any exposed metal work? Are there any applied parts? What type of apply? What type of um, uh, what type are the applied parts? B, BF, or CF? Um, a patient monitor, for example, will have multiple functions and different types of uh, applied parts. So this is something to take note of. So what's the difference between a code and a standard? Well, a standard is a document containing technical definitions, procedures, guidance, and manufacturer for manufacturers, installers, and equipment users. It contains mandatory uh, requirements, but uh, compliance can be voluntary. A code is a document that has, it's been enacted into law by local or regional or national authorities uh, having jurisdiction uh, so that the engineer or contractor is legally obliged to comply. Um, it has mandatory requirements, compliance is law. Adhering to a standard is uh, not law, but it is best practice and uh, it's integral for good quality management systems. For example, if uh, in the, the table, IEC 60601 and IEC 62353 are recognized international testing standards and uh, adopted in numerous countries, but NFPA 99 is specific to North America and required by law. The tests from all other standards are and codes originate um, from the IEC 60601 1 standard, uh, as shown in the table. But some of the methods are altered for different conditions. So I'm going to go through IEC 60601 and um, run through all the uh, the tests that we have in here. So IEC in the International Electrotechnical Committee um, has produced uh, this uh, standard to control all aspects of safety directly or indirectly relating to the handling, use, connection to medical equipment, and the standard refer is referred to as IC 60601. So IC 60601 was first published in 1977, then referred to as IEC 601. Um, it manages the electrical safety for both mechanical and electrical issues. It's const constructed from two parts, IEC 60601-1 and IEC 60601-2, each built up from a number of basic um, collateral standards. Uh, it's a mandatory design and test type standard. It is for electrical mechanical safety and uh, compliance of medical electrical equipment. It ensures the safety of uh, a patient, user, and environment. IEC 60601-1 is the collateral standard, which has a number of specific standards related directly to the safety of medical equipment. And IEC 60601-2 is the standard specific to various types of medical equipment, providing additional information to the collateral standards. Next slide. 
Um, so I see 60601 body model. Uh, this is a um, diagram of the body model. To ensure a traceable simulation of current is passing through a human body, a measurement circuit has been designed to simulate the average typical electrical characteristics of a human body. These measurement circuits are referred to as body models or measuring devices. Some standards such as um, the AMI or NFPA 99 and IEC 61010 specify different electrical characteristics so, uh, than that of um, IEC 60601 1. So, fault condition. Um, to maintain a medical uh, device's high level of protection during its operational life and to maintain the integrity of the device's electrical safety, a number of design features have been taken into account. This is done by introducing conditions that could occur under normal use, um, such as reverse main supply or voltage on signal input output terminals and conditions that can occur under a single fault. IC60601-1 specifies a number of single fault conditions uh, under its clause 8.1. And IEC 60601-1 specifies that a leakage or leakage measurement should be carried out using normal and single fault conditions. These are all the conditions that may occur under normal use. Uh, we have open earth, uh, reverse main supply, open neutral, mains on applied part, mains on signal input output. For IOC, IEC 60601, we, uh, we would like to have the following tests uh, in place. Earthbound test, um, IEC 60601 requires a minimum test current uh, of either 25 amps AC or one and a half times the highest rated current of the relevant leakage test with single fault conditions. Uh, Earth is the leakage current flowing through the medical device or its insulation into uh, the protective earth conductor. Enclosure or touch is the leakage current that would flow if a person came into contact with the housing of a medical device or any um, accessible part not intended for treatment or care. Patient uh, leakage is AC or DC. It's the current flowing from the applied part via the patient to earth or floating from the patient via an applied part to earth, uh, originating from an unintended voltage appearing on an external source. Patient auxiliary, AC or DC, is the leakage current that fl would flow between uh, applied parts under normal and fault conditions. For these tests, current is measured between a single part of the applied part and all other applied parts connected together. And for patient type F, the leakage current that would flow if uh, mains potential was uh, applied to an applied part, which was attached to a patient. Um, so um, this test is applied only to uh, type BF and to type CF equipment. So for our earth bond tests, uh, earth bond testing, also referred to as ground bond testing, earth resistance, earth continuity, or protective earth testing. Um, it tests the integrity of the low resistance connection between the earth conductor and any metal conductive parts, which may uh, become live in case of uh, a fault on a class one medical device. Although many class one medical devices are supplied with an earth reference point, most medical devices require multiple earth bond tests to validate the connections of additional metal accessible parts on the enclosure. Uh, the test current is applied between the earth pin uh, of the main supply plug and uh, any accessible metal uh, part, um, including the earth reference point uh, with the uh, uh, with a dedicated earth bond test lead using a uh, crocodile clip or probe. The resistance measurement uh, is shown in the schematic on the right. 
uh, the limits in IC60601 are less than a mil uh, 100 milliamp, uh, milliohm, sorry, excluding the power cord and less than 200 milliohm, including the power cord. For earth leakage, the earth leakage test shows the current flowing through the medical device or its insulation into the protective earth conductor. The earth leakage test is important as it demonstrates the total leakage from the EUT or equipment under test or the device under test. Um, IC60601-1 specifies that the measurements are done under normal and reverse operation and single fault condition neutral open circuit. The earth leakage test is valid for class one equipment with type B, type BF and type CF applied parts. The limit for normal conditions um, is five milliamps and for single fault conditions is 10 milliamps. The diagram uh, shows a schematic um, with the interruption of the earth leakage measurement uh, with measuring uh, circuit and includes the relays for operating um, the single fault condition as you can see on the neutral. Um, in this example, note uh, that neutral is open. You would test neutral closed and neutral open. Um, for enclosure or touch leakage, in general, enclosure leakage displays the current that would flow if a person came into contact with the housing of the medical device or any accessible part not intended for treatment or care. In IEC 60601, it specifies that the measurements are done under normal and reverse operation of the main supply. And our single fault condition for this is neutral circuit open and earth open. The enclosure leakage test is valid for both class one and class two equipment, type B, BF and CF applied parts. Leakage limits are, no, uh, are normal uh, conditions uh, uh, is five milliamps and for single fault conditions would be 10 milliamps. So again, you can see in the diagram, we have the um, representation of the um, open earth and open neutral uh, with the uh, probe touching the enclosure, going through the body model uh, to protective earth. For patient leakage tests, uh, the patient leakage current is current flowing from the applied part via the uh, patient to earth or flowing from the patient via an applied part to earth originating from the uh, unintended voltage appearing on an external source. IEC 60601-1 specifies that the measurements must be done under normal and reverse operation of the main supply. Single fault conditions are open neutral and open earth. The patient leakage uh, test is valid for both class one and class two um, with the uh, type B, BF, and CF applied parts. Uh, AC and DC readings are taken for patient leakage. And in the diagram, you can once again see the uh, measurements, including the relays open on the single fault conditions, uh, just as we did before. Uh, you can also see that I have the um, test lead going through to the, so the applied part is connected to the, to the um, medical uh, analyzer. So for type CF equipment, the patient leakage current is measured from each uh, part separately. Um, for type B and type BF equipment, the patient leakage, leakage um, current is measured um, with all applied, all applied parts connected together. The pass-fail limits for IEC 60601 are shown in the table uh, for B, BF, and CF under normal and single fault condition. So patient auxiliary leakage test. Uh, the patient auxiliary current displays the leakage current that would flow between applied parts under normal and fault conditions. And IEC 60601 specifies that the measurements can be carried out under normal and reverse operation of the main supply. Uh, single fault conditions are open neutral and open earth. Uh, patient auxiliary leakage test is valid for class one, class two, B, BF, and CF applied parts. 
Um, lock patient leakage AC and DC readings are taken. Uh, the diagram shows uh, schematic uh, interpreting uh, F-type leakage uh, measurement, including the relays open in the single fault conditions. And for these tests, current is measured between a single part of the applied part and all other applied parts connected together. The test needs to be repeated until all combinations have been tested. This is also referred to as, um, as applied part to all uh, test. The limits for B, BF, CF, uh, and the DC measurements under normal and single fault conditions are found in this table on the on your screen. So for patient uh, leakage uh, F-type test, uh, it's often referred to mains on applied parts. Uh, displace the current that would flow if mains potential was applied to the applied parts, which was attached to a patient. The This test is applied only to type BF and CF uh, equipment. The test involves applying a current limited mains potential, 110% of mains uh, input voltage to the applied part connections. Due to the requirements for IEC 60601 one the test current can be uh, in excess of five milliamps under uh, short circuit conditions and is therefore uh, fairly hazardous uh, for the user. Portion should be taken when uh, when conducting this test. Uh, current limiting is achieved with a limiting resistor in series with the measurement circuit. And um, the diagram uh, shows leakage with a single applied part being tested, which uh, tells us that this is CF. IC60601-1 specifies that leakage current for CF applied parts is measured from each of the patient connections applied parts separately. Uh, for type BF uh, equipment, the leakage current is measured with all parts of the same type of applied part connected together. The limits for leakage currents within the IC 60601-1 uh, requirements are set to uh, minimizing the probability of ventricular fibrillation. Um, this goes back to the risks from microshock and macroshock. Uh, the table can be found in the IEC 60601 standard, so it's available for, for you anytime you, you have a copy of that. Uh, the pass-fail limits for earth leakage and in the third edition of IEC 601 has been increased from 500 micrograms under normal condition to 5,000 micrograms for class one. And that's equipment with no exposed metal parts um, that may become live um, if, uh, if or when a fault appears. Test limits are set um, at 0 0.1 ohms for fixed power cords and 0 0.2 ohms for equipment with uh, detachable power cords. So that was um, IEC 60601, and now we get to go through the um, uh, IEC 62353 standard, and um, you'll see there's quite a difference here. So to ensure safety of um, the patient and the operator, electrical medical equipment must meet uh, the design requirements of IEC 60601 and test requirements must be carried out under the worst possible conditions to ensure maximum safety. Conducting this type of rigorous testing during the development stages of the product life cycle, life cycle is not necessary uh, in routine testing. IEC 62353 incorporates tests beyond those of type testing. It seeks to provide uh, uniform and unambiguous means of assessing the safety of medical equipment whilst maintaining the relevance to IC 60601-1 and also minimizing the risks of, uh, to uh, persons conducting the ass assessment. 
So IEC 6353 follows the need for a unified approach to routine testing or recurrent tests and tests after repair of medical equipment. Routine testing is also referred to as planned pre uh, preventative maintenance or PPM. This is a form of testing uh, or this form of testing is often conducted uh, at fixed time intervals which vary between types of equipment, uh, uh, manufacturers' recommendations and risk assessment procedures undertaken by uh, an individual biomedical clinic, uh, clinic, biomedical or clin clinical um, engineer or medical uh, physics departments. Routine testing is not limited to safety testing and often includes the verification of correct functionality the IC62353 standard is well accepted and used in most of Europe by leading manufacturers and hospitals and provides a quick and uncompromised test on electrical safety of medical devices. It was first published in uh, May 2007 with the uh, second revision published in uh, October 2014. And one of the most significant changes uh, to the 2014 edition is there is a recommendation to test according to IEC 62353 at the final pr production line uh, stages as, as well. So uh, before equipment goes into service. So uh, recording PPM and uh, uh, our sequential testing, uh, our objective here is to prevent or find potential faults. The strength of IC6353 enables those who carry out testing uh, to conduct a summary of tests on the input of medical uh, devices uh, and on the output of uh, medical equipment. Equipment leakage for the input and applied part leakage for the output. The time saving associated with IEC 62353 uh, in comparison to IEC 60601 also allows for more time to be spent on visual and functional testing to ensure pre prevention of any potential faults. The sequence of testing is as follows. We have um, for our visual in inspection, uh, well, we have our visual inspection and then uh, testing um, the means of protection. We have our earth bonding and insulation. Uh, next, testing the effectiveness of the protection. We have leakage currents. Uh, then testing the performance and finally reporting and analyzing, uh, which leads to prevention. So the process of visual inspection is always clearly defined. So in this case, common sense will, will always be your, your best tool. Uh, in most cases, a visual inspection is relatively easy, uh, a relatively easy procedure, which is carried out to ensure that medical electronic equipment is uh, in use, is, is still conforms to the um, specification released by the manufacturer uh, and is in its life cycle, not suffered from any external damage or contamination. The inspections often include um, the housing or enclosure, and often here we look at the uh, look for damage or cracks. Uh, this also includes uh, uh, decontamination, look for any obstruction or moving parts, or the uh, in the connector pins, uh, cabling. This uh, includes the supply cable, applied parts, etc. Look for cuts or incorrect connections. Uh, we check the fuse rating, check uh, that we have the correct values, uh, marking and labeling, check the integrity of any uh, safety markings, um, integrity of mechanical parts, check for any obstructions. Um, and it's also important to note that it's widely documented that 70% of all faults are detected during the visual inspection. So for uh, earth bond currents, uh, IEC 60601-1 uh, specifies 25 amps um, and is a manufacturer uh, test. So due to the exposure of constant high current, some parts of the equipment could uh, be damaged. Uh, 
the Earth uh, bond test is designed to stress the connection under fault conditions. It's also important to remember that contact resistance can easily be overlooked when using the required 25 amps in IEC 60601. This is because high uh, test currents can temporarily uh, repair poor mechanical connections. In IEC 62353, uh, it recommends that uh, protective earth connections are tested with a 200 milliamp uh, test current to highlight any aging power cords. Although high readings could be as a result of uh, some form resistance, uh, which uh, you can remove, uh, combining a high pre-pulse to clean the film resistance and measuring with a low current uh, to show any res uh, restriction resistance is uh, the most accurate way to determine the uh, quality of the protective earth. One more thing to note in IEC 62353, um, if using a DC test current, the resistance must be tested in both polarities of the test current. So there are two different types of leakage cur uh, current tests in IEC 62353. We have equipment leakage or input safety, which is the means of operator protection or MOOP. And it refers to reducing the risk of electric shock to persons other than the patient. Then we have applied part leakage or output safety, uh, which is our means of patient protection or MOP referring to um, reducing the risk of electric shock to the patient. To ensure that the medical equipment does not pose any electrical hazard to the patient or any other person, uh, it's designed with uh, sufficient levels of isolation or dielectrics to reduce the amount of uh, electrical leakage current to an acceptable and safe level. And this is as low as uh, 10 microamps. This is achieved by separating high electrical potentials from any conductive parts accessible to the operator or the patient. There are different measure, uh, methods of uh, for conducting leakage tests, and this would be subject to practicality. Um, each have their own benefits and disadvantages, but uh, provide a real uh, world testing alternative for leakage testing. Uh, we have um, the direct method, we have the differential method, and we have the alternative methods, uh, uh, which we'll go into a bit more um, shortly. Uh, we use uh, common patient connections and the total leakage measurement, uh, which provides uh, significant time saving during our routine safety testing. So equipment leakage, uh, the direct equipment leakage test is a total sum of leakage deriving from the incoming mains to earth via the APs and enclosure with uh, open earth as our single fault condition. This is for class one, class two, uh, B, BF and CF equipment. All patient connections are shorted together and um, an RMS value is taken. The diagram over here shows how the total sum of leakage is measured from the applied parts, enclosure, and earth. Uh, what we should do, what should we do if we, um, we have a, a fault condition come up or a fault come up when we're testing is um, we should test individual points, um, which can help us identify where the error is coming from. So for direct leakage um, for APs, this is uh, this means uh, uh, this is means of patient protection. Uh, the total leakage of patient uh, uh, connections AP to earth and non-conductive parts of the enclosure. The fault condition is mains on applied parts. Um, it's important to note that uh, this is not one hundred and ten percent of mains, unlike um, IEC six hundred six hundred one. There is uh, current limiting resistor in the circuit. Uh, this is 3.5 milliamps um, and it's limited at mains frequency. Floating type BF and CF for class one and class two equipment. Uh, we, we group uh, patient connections of each single function and the excluded APs are left floating. So we're grouping the APs testing uh, the single. So C if it's CF, we're testing 
Uh, AP1 is CF parts. We are testing those and then we'll test the AP2. Um, and then an RMS uh, value is taken. The diagram uh, shows how one patient group is connected and measuring uh, uh, the circuit on AP1. So for direct leakage, uh, the direct leakage uh, method is identical to the method used in IC60601 standard, uh, measuring the uh, true leakage uh, through the body model to, to earth. The benefits include um, an AC and DC leakage current test, and it uh, also has the highest accuracy due to uh, potential leakage through human body via measuring via the measuring device. Considerations, uh, the one kilo ohm uh, resistor forming the measuring device is uh, interrupted, uh, is interrupting the low resistance uh, protective earth path, uh, therefore causing a potential hazard when testing faulty equipment. The secondary earth uh, path could also lead to a zero uh, current reading as previously described. The difference in uh, polarity of the live and neutral conductors might alter the leakage readings. Um, so as such, uh, leakage measurements must be done in each polarity of the mains. And for this one, we require a TN uh, or terra neutral system uh, to ensure that the uh, measurements are done at maximum live to earth voltage. For the differential leakage method, uh, uh, this measures the leakage current as a result of uh, an imbalance in current between the live conductor and the neutral conductor. The benefits include measuring uh, measurements not being influenced by secondary earth connections. It means the total equipment leakage current uh, is measured. The measuring device uh, or one kilo ohm uh, resistor is no longer in series with the uh, earth conductor, providing a low uh, resistance uh, protective earth and therefore is safer practice compared uh, to using the direct method. There are some considerations, however, um, the differential leakage measurement is uh, less suitable to accurately measure lower leakage currents, um, smaller than 100 microamps. The measurements can be influenced by external magnetic fields or uh, the analyzer's own internal magnetic fields. Uh, the measurements can be influenced by high current consumption of the uh, device under test, and the measurements have limited frequency response. The difference in polarity uh, of the live and neutral conductors might alter the leakage readings, meaning that leakage measurements must be done in each polarity of the mains. So the alternative method is in effect similar to a dielectric uh, strength test um, at mains potential um, or an insulation test uh, at AC voltage, including uh, using a, a current limiting uh, voltage source at mains frequency. So the maximum short circuit current is limited to three and a half uh, milliamps throughout uh, through a, cur a current limiting uh, resistor of about 66 kilo ohms. The live and neutral conductors are shorted together and the current limited voltage is applied between the mains parts and other parts of the equipment. The benefits are live and neutral are combined. So the mains polarity has no influence um, and only one measurement is required here. The DUT is disconnected from the mains, uh, therefore providing a high level of safety uh, for the engineer. Um, a TN system is not required uh, due to this being a mains uh, free application. Measurements are not influenced by any secondary earth connections, uh, but something to consider is that the equipment under test will not be active, which uh, prevents the measurement of actual leakage currents on the equipment. Uh, with switch circuits. Uh, so the measured leakage will be scaled as well. Only uh, directly comparison, comparable to um, IEC 60601 uh, neutral uh, open or twice the expected earth leakage. 
So here are some uh, pass fail limits. Um, note the additional option specific to routine testing, um, CF uh, defib defibrillator paddles and uh, mobile X-ray generators um, because they specified. Test limits for each uh, for for Earth Bond are also very um, more so in IEC six two three five three. Um, 100 milli ohm for a detachable power cable up to three meters and 300 milli ohm for a class one device, including the power cable and not exceeding three meters. 500 milli ohm for a medical system consisting of several medical and non-medical pieces of equipment. So there are some differences to take note of. So how does IEC 62353 compare with IEC 60601? Um, what are the main implications of testing to IEC 62353 and how does it differ um, from the very well-established, widely understood IEC 60601? Well, the main difference is uh, routine testing and type testing. Um, so there, there are various uh, stages throughout the product lifecycle. Uh, we have design um, at the first stage of the product lifecycle. Life cycle. Um, and during this stage, um, it's a concept. It's subject to initial uh, clinical trials. And we have type, the type testing stage. And here yeah, the product's expected to have uh, uh, been completed uh, uh, in clinical trials and subject to type testing. It's ready for uh, marketing. The hardware and the software of the product is verified against design standards. And when the C uh, marking is obtained, the medical product can be uh, marketed in the uh, European economic area. End of line test. Uh, well, during this stage, the product um, products are being assembled, tested, and inspected for release into the marketplace. And then we have the acceptance test. And this is uh, once a medical device reaches the client uh, and an acceptance test is performed, uh, the test is there to verify the device uh, is delivered in an acceptable condition, complete without any uh, defaults and available with all specified um, accessories. <laughs> then we have the operator training, which is uh, required once a new device is delivered. And then we have the maintenance or plan preventative maintenance. Uh, and this is a process whereby uh, the device is subject to scheduled inspections and tests in order to verify that the safety and operation are within acceptable levels um, and criteria. Uh, this is uh, referred to as protect, uh, proactive maintenance. Next, we have repair and uh, if required, when the device um, will be susceptible su susceptible to um, further inspection and testing, um, this is referred to as a reactive maintenance. And lastly, we have the decommissioning. And um, this is the end of the life, uh, the product life cycle. And um, depending on its function and material content, uh, may uh, be required to follow some set pro process for uh, hazardous materials um, uh, to uh, discard it, um, or it may be uh, subject to a second life um, in another part of the world. So here we have a diagram of uh, the crossover between um, uh, the stages, so um, the testing cycle and the overlap between IEC 62353 and IEC 60601. Um, electronic and mechanical design of the product must be in line with the IEC 60601 standard, but note that IEC 62353 can be applied at any point post-production. Uh, Now this table um, highlights the time-saving benefits uh, associated with IEC 62353, which allows for more time to be sent, uh, spent on visual and functional uh, testing. Um, and over here in this example, I've um, used uh, 10 CF applied parts under test. So the difference between um, tests um, is clearly visible uh, for tests versus 
290 tests, and um, that's for our leakage tests only. Sorry, Donovan, we yes. have run out of time. I don't know how many slides you've left. Um, I can I can skip the uh, the alternative testing part, and then uh, that would just cover the electrical safety. If if you're okay with that. Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Um, we can always call you back on another time. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I just want to quickly do a thank you. And then what we can do is for those who can still stay on, there is a couple of questions. We can quickly run through it. Okay. This session will be um, available online uh, once Dieter has done some editing. And for those that want to leave, can can always log in and go and just see the rest of the of the presentation at the end. Uh, if you still have a couple of minutes, we can just uh, maybe finish that off. And then um, I just want to also say thank you to Dieter for the technical support for today. Thanks, Donovan. Um, I think it was very educational. And I think the technical knowledge that you have shared today is very relevant to our uh, members. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask you just to finish off your, 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 what, your last thoughts. And then we can do a couple of questions. And for those who can stay on, you are welcome for the rest. Uh, thank you very much for attending. This was actually a record attendance for today. And uh, you can you can um, uh, log into our uh, uh, KISA YouTube channel and you can go and watch the rest of the, of the um, presentation there. Thank you very much. Um, Donovan, you can continue um, and Dita will just uh, uh, finalize this for us. Um, uh, thank you. You can you can finish your last um, slide or so if you want to, and then when you are done, just let me know. Uh, we've got about seven questions that we can quickly just have a look. At. Right, we were there at the last slide. I finished that uh, that one, and uh, the next slide went on to alternative testing methods, um, which is um, there's three different types of equipment in there. So testing three phase and um, ultrasound and battery operated equipment. So that was the, the last uh, portion of the webinar. Unfortunately, I can only do it as fast as I can I can get through the information. There's a lot of information there, um, but um, I think that where we've got to at this point is um, it's it's a pretty good point to, to uh, get to and to stop. And um, I wanted to really highlight the importance of the two different standards um, that we use while we're using them, what tests are in there, um, and while we do safety testing, um, that's the, the most important part. I've got a lot of um, thunder here, so I hope it's not going to interfere. If you can't hear me, just let me know. I'm going to read the questions out to you, and then you can respond. Um, okay. okay, so how does Rigel safety uh, tester overcome contact variable resistance when using 200 milliamps during earth bond? Uh, so um, the the tester itself produces the two hundred milliamps for the earth bond, but it will um, it uses something called um, uh, Zap technology, and what that is is it's just a, uh, a high uh, pulse zap of current um, up to twenty five amps, um, and that will clear your film resistance. Um, but it's um, it can do the earth bond um, on battery power at two hundred milliamps. Thank you. Uh, what is a secondary earth path and how does it affect my test result? Um, the secondary earth path is, um, uh, as, I, as I've demonstrated in the, in the slide, it's um, something connected to your medical device that is connected to another earth path. And how that can affect your, your results is, um, well, it can, you can basically pass a, um, a, a medical device that is a failure um, if you have a secondary uh, earth path. So what uh, what we have is we have um, uh, obviously current taking the, the lowest path of resistance. And because we have the body model in the uh, analyzer um, at one kilo ohm, the lowest path is normally um, the earth through your socket. And um, the current uh, that you are trying to measure will actually go through that secondary path instead of going through the analyzer. So you won't get a uh, won't get the correct reading on the analyzer. So it's uh, important that you make or you're aware that um, the analyzer, first of all, the 
288 and the 62353 uh, Rigel products do have a warning that comes up because they do detect that uh, secondary earth bath and that you make sure that it's um, disconnected uh, before you start your testing. Perfect, thank you. How do I test three-phase medical equipment? That was in the next part of the, uh, the uh, slides. Um, I, I do have some testing routine. So, I mean, if anybody wants a copy of this, um, they're welcome to uh, send me an email. Um, I'll give you my email address even. Um, it's uh, donovanl at rigelmedical.com. And my name is spelled D-O-N-A-V-A-N. Uh, with an L at the end for my surname at rigelmedical.com. Send me that and I'll send you a copy of the uh, the presentation. And then uh, in the last few slides that I was going to show, it shows you exactly how to test three phase. But um, coming back to this sort of testing, this is uh, specialized testing um, because um, three phase equipment is normally, um, it normally has its own DB and you have to have, uh, you know, the qualifications to uh, do the isolation and then do the testing. Perfect, thank you. When do we measure AC or DC or AC and DC? So in the different leakage tests um, uh, set by the standard, um, it's measured automatically by the analyzer. So it's already programmed into the standard. The standard dictates where we um, do AC or DC um, leakage measurements. So uh, if you had to, uh, for instance, go into the Ruggles, uh, uh um, analyzer and uh, so the 288 plus and select a 62353 test, it would select the appropriate test to uh, um, uh, mimic the what's in the standard. So you don't have to know when to select it, you just have to know that it's part of the standard. Also, um, in this uh, presentation, if you want to copy, uh, you'll see that up, uh, all the tests are um, uh, uh, sequenced and it shows you each test and what it does in that uh, testing sequence. So if you wanted to make up a custom test, you could um, make use of the presentation and then or the standard if, if you like, and it will tell you where to add those tests. Thank you. In my experience, equipment seldom fail the electrical safety test during routine testing. What is the main factors causing electrical safety faults picked up during routine testing. Um, and then they are just thanking you for the informative um, uh, presentation. <laughs> um, at that, you know, how, how big is the earth? I don't know exactly. Um, and that's that's how I can explain how faults come, up, come along. You know, components wear down inside uh, uh, your uh, medical devices. You're transporting them up and down the corridors. They're going from one office to another. Um, so um, this is where you are most likely to, to um, see any failure um, is in that transport process because they um, delicate. it's delicate equipment. It's not uh, made to be um, uh, transported over rough uh, terrain and so forth and so on. So these are factors that, uh, that are part of the, uh, the failure. And also, if you look at um, cables, they get bent and uh, they flex beyond what they, they're supposed to be um, uh, flexed and that causes a breakdown of the insulation. So that's where you'll find those sort of faults come into play. Is the regulations for IEC 62653 only a requirement for repairs and preventive maintenance servicing? Or does it also require users to do a test when new medical equipment is delivered to the healthcare facility following the test uh, of the factory? Yeah, so why it's important to, um, you receiving a, a new piece of medical equipment, why it's important for you to test that first is it gives you that benchmark. So it says, here's my test, my first test that I've done on my uh, new piece of equipment, and these are the values that I'm getting. And that's your benchmark when you do testing as the product goes through the, the its life cycle, so its its cycle of use, um, so it's important to do that uh, that sort of testing. Okay, so I see the last question was, what is the test procedure for ultrasound? That was the one that you also mm -hmm. mentioned was in your slides to follow. Yes. So, like I say, we will just have to do this again. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm going to be um, uh, talking uh, at a at a university, and uh, I'm I'm going to be in South Africa uh, probably in twenty third of March, April. Um, so uh, you know, I'll I'll be about in the industry. So if anybody uh, is uh, looking to to see me, it'd be interesting to see some some people and to talk to them and uh, you know give them a bit of education on these uh, these sort of things. But uh, yes, I can give you the handout, and it's in the handout as well. It's um, it's quite a procedure, but um, it's um, it's a good procedure to follow because it's uh, it covers every sort of base um, and. You guarantee that you get to fund uh, any any sort of uh, degre degradation in the the equipment if you if you use it. Thank you very much. That that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you very much, Donovan. I do appreciate you being here, and thank you very much for all the members, associates, and um, corporate members that's been here. Um, have a lovely week. Uh, week. Thank you for having me.